Okay, we're going to take a look at how to do correlations um, in SPSS. So here I have a data set that is based on the data that you guys gave me related to the interest checklist and the demographic questionnaire. Um, <clears throat> and what I have here is data for 15 participants. And I only put some of the variables in. So I only put in the ver the, all of the ones from the demographic questionnaire, such as age, gender, marital status, education level, etc. And then I put in the variables for um, whether or not they've been interested in an activity for the last year. And, whoops, got away from me, whether or not they're currently doing activity. So those are the two sets of variables I'm working with here. So if we're going to do a correlation, um, we need to do uh, correlations with either um, you can do them with any scale data or with interval data. You can't do correlations with nominal data. Um, you can do another statistic called a chi-square that we'll talk about um, later. So let's take a look at um, doing a correlation between two of our interval variables. So we're going to click on Analyze, on Correlate, and then over here, you're going to choose bivariate. That just means a correlation between two variables. So bivariate, two variables. Uh, what a partial correlation is, is um, if you want to do correlate, correlate two variables, but you want to um, separate out something about one of the variables, you can use a partial correlation. We're not going to worry about that right now. Let's just click on bivariate correlations. Oh, and I was kind of messing with this before, so I'm going to um, move these variables back over and you can just hit reset to do that. Um, and so now we need to correlate some variables. Uh, so let's pick, let's pick two interval um, variables. So let's pick the interval variable of health, let's say. So I'll just click on that and move it over. And then maybe their interest in um, some exercise related things. So we'll, we'll use their interest in the last year in walking and maybe their interest in the last year in exercising. Let me just find that one. It's going to take me a second because there's a lot of variables in here. Mm -hmm. ah, there it is. Exercise interest in the last year. So we'll move that over there too. So then we want to look over here at our options. Um, and we don't need to really about uh, worry about any of these when we're doing um, the correlations. So um, you could also produce means and standard deviations while you're doing the correlation. Um, you could make decisions about um, if you're missing any values, what you would do with them. Uh, and we're not, we don't have to worry about that because we're, uh, we don't have any missing values in our data. Um, but the next thing we need to choose is the, which correlation coefficient. In class, we're basically going to be deciding between either Pearson's or Spearman's, as I talked about in the lecture this week. And because this is interval data, you have to use the Spearman's correlation, a, a non-parametric correlation, um, because data that is ordinal doesn't meet the uh, requirements for a um, parametric correlation, which is what Pearson's is. So we're going to choose Spearman's. We're going to choose two-tailed because we don't know how the correlation is going to play out, the direction it'll play out in, um, and then we're ready to go. Oh, and the other thing is, too, we always want to click this little box here for flag significant correlations because it'll help you read your results a little more easily. So then I'm just going to click OK. All right, I'm going to move the window over a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. So here's our correlations. Um, we can see here... Um, You'll, you'll notice the variables listed down the left side of this table and then across the top as well. So you'll notice any time you look at the correlation between two variables that are the same, like health and health, you'll see that it's zero, right? Or one, pardon me, one, meaning it's a perfect correlation, which makes sense it's the same thing. Or same thing between walking interest in the past year, walking interest in the past year, it's one, exercise in the past year, interest in exercise in the past year, 
one as well. So um, we see that. So let's take a look um, at our first correlation here between interest in walking in the last year and health. And what we see here, there's two numbers that we're going to concern ourselves with. This third number here of the N, that's just how many people we were testing, 15 there. But let's take a look at these two numbers. So the top number here is the correlation coefficient. What this tells you is the strength of the relationship between the two variables. So this particular variable has a strength of 0.65, which is between a moderate and strong relationship. That's a very good, that's good correlation. 0.65 is a good correlation. Um, and we also see that it is a statistically significant correlation because our p-value is 0 0.009, which is much less than 0.05. It's even less than 0 0.01. So it's a, a very, it, this, um, means that there's less than a 1% chance that our correlation is due to chance, which typically you wouldn't have a correlation this high if it wasn't significant. But anyway, the other thing I want to point out to you guys is that this is a negative correlation. What that means is, as one, remember a negative correlation means as the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable decreases. Now that might seem weird between walking and health, you would think they'd go together, interest in walking and health, you'd think they'd go together, but we have to remember how the variables are coded. So for example, interest in things is coded with a two for strong interest, a one for some interest, and a zero for no interest. Um, and health is coded um, with a one for excellent, a two for good, a three for fair, and a four for poor. So you can see with health, the numbers actually, your health is better as the numbers decrease. Um, whereas the, for this variable walking, your interest increases as the number increase. So what a negative 6.65 variable is saying is that as interest in walking increases, health increases. Now, I know that's a little confusing because of the negative, but the reason why, um, the why it, it is the way it is is because the way the health variables are set up, because lower numbers mean better health, and here, higher numbers mean more interest. So what we're seeing here is a relationship between more interest in walking and better health. Better health has lower numbers, so that's where that relationship is, and it's significant. Now, interestingly, let's look at the relationship between exercise, interest in exercise in the past year, and health, right? So we can see, first of all, it's not a significant correlation. Um, so what this 0.20 is saying is that there's a 20% chance that this relationship we're seeing is just due to chance alone. Uh, and that's a, a chance beyond what we've set our level at. We've set it at 0 0.05, so um, it's not significant. Um, and we can see that it's a low correlation. 0.347 is a low correlation. Or, um, But what's interesting here is it's a positive correlation, even though it's low. And so what that is telling us is as interest in exercise increases, health decreases, which means it gets, um, hold on a second, I want to make sure I'm getting this right. As interest in exercise increases, um, there's also an, an increase in the number related to health. And remember, the higher the number for health, the more, the worse health is. Because remember, poor is four and one is excellent. So a positive correlation means the more interest people are showing in exercise, the worse their health is. But again, remember, um, with core one, this is a small sample. Two, we are just looking at relationships. We can't say that one co that being interested in exercise makes your health worse, or that being in, interested in walking makes your health better. We're just saying there's a relationship there. Um, so let's go ahead and do one more correlation um, kind of quickly here so you can see that. 
again. Well, I'm not going to say that. So let's go here again and let's do analyze, correlate, bivariate. And I'm just going to clear everything. And let's see, let's do two more. Um, Uh, interval variable. So let's maybe pick, let's see, let's pick, huh, let's maybe pick education level and one of the interests that seems to be more like brainy. Like let me find science and history if I can find those. Or maybe read, well, no, not read. Let's do science and history. It's going to take me the rest of my time just to find these. Watch, I roll past it. Oh, here's science. And then history is right there. Okay, good, handy. Whoops, science first, then history. Okay, and then we're going to do our Spearman's correlation again because remember, this is ordinal data, it's non parametric data, and we're going to pick our two tails and then take a look at our correlation here. Whoops, hold on, I'm just going to move it over a little bit. So we can see what is the correlation between education level and interest in science. So we can see here that it is not a significant, neither of these correlations is significant, and they're very low. 0 0.08, that's like negligible. So there's no relationship there. We've seen no relationship there. Um, so that's basically, that's how you do um, correlations in SPSS. Thanks.